Okay, welcome along everybody to another Dicker Data Training Academy. My name is Robert Crane. Hope that everybody has uh, recovered from the Microsoft Partner Conference and we're ready to get back into it. So again, if you need to contact me, the details are on the screen there. But mainly if you have any questions uh, around what's presented here, including things like licensing, Office 365 style questions, please direct those to uh, microsoft.sales at dickerdata.com.au. Okay, so we're back on our weekly webinar schedule. Uh, today, we're gonna to be talking about Power BI. Next week, the 16th, we'll be looking at Skype for Business. The 23rd, we'll see us uh, spend a bit of time on the Azure, Azure Open Calculator, so how to calculate pricing uh, under Open. Um, September the 30th, we'll be managing Office 365 identities. So things around Dersync, things around federated identities, um, we'll start incorporating. Okay, so with that, what we're going to have a look at today is we're going to start off by just revisiting some of the features and functionality in Excel, uh, especially things like pivot tables, because they are more or less what uh, Power BI is very much based on. We'll then dive into Power BI and look at some of the plans and the features. We'll look at connecting to some standard data sources, creating some reports. Um, the most uh, interesting feature, I think, is the Power Query. We'll run over that. We'll finish off with our normal takeaways uh, and best practices. The majority of um, our presentation today will be around um, live demos. So again, with this, with that, let me swap over to my uh, machine so you can uh, see that. So give that a minute to uh, present itself. So what you should see when this comes up is basically a Windows 10 desktop. Okay, so what I've got here uh, inside uh, this folder is a standard file here, Excel data file. Um, if I open that up, basically what it is, is it's um, crime statistics from Chicago. Now, if you have a look at this, you'll see that we have um, a fair amount of rows on here. So we've got something like uh, 38,000 odd rows there. Okay, so there's a lot of data and you can see it's set out in um, a standard table format. So obviously what we've got is the case number, the date when the crime occurred. We've got the crime classification. So for example, heroin is case classification 2024. The description, uh, where the crime took place, the location, um, and then some other information. And importantly, we have some um, mapping information, some location in longitude and latitude. Now, uh, all of this sort of functionality has been available in Excel for a number of versions, so back to 2010. So there should be some, nothing particularly new here. So what I'm running here on my Windows 10 machine is uh, Excel 2016, but again, um, it's very much the same as 2013 and a lot like 2010. So what we do is we select our data here and we'll go in and insert a pivot table. We'll put the pivot table basically on a new tab. Now what a pivot table gives us basically is our data fields on the left hand side, which we can then throw into a uh, table format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the descriptions and I'm going to drag that into rows. I'm then going to take the IUCR, which is uh, like the number of crimes, and I'm going to drag that into values. And you can see now that the table on the left-hand side begins to be populated. Now, at the moment, the values have defaulted to sum of IUCR, which we don't want. We want to go in and go to value field settings, and we want to change that from sum to count. So that will give us a unique count of the number of crimes. And as you can see, um, we've already been able to uh, basically do that. But what I need to do is let's sort that. So if I go into that column and right mouse click on it, you'll see that I can now sort that from largest to smallest. And again, you can see that uh, the crime of cannabis 30 grams or less uh, outranks all the others basically four to one. So again, imagine all sorts of data being able to pull into a, a pivot table, then you can change what is filtered, what is columns, uh, you can slice and dice your data, create all sorts of different um, data models here. So again, pivot charts have been around in Excel for um, you know, quite a while. So if you haven't seen them, haven't used them, um, very, very powerful. Now, once I've got a pivot table, what I can start doing is if I want to move beyond pure numbers, I can now start introducing uh, graphs. So what I'll do here is make sure my data selected. I'll go into insert and I will put in a pivot chart. So it's going to make a decision 
based on the data as to what is the best pivot chart option. So in this case, it's going to do a clustered column. I'm happy with that initially. Um, unfortunately, it puts it over the top. So what I'll do is I will just cut that and I will now open a new sheet, put that in a new clean sheet, expand that out. And basically that is a nice graphical representation of the information um, that we looked at um, numerically before. You'll see the pivot table um, idea with the data here, again, is now in a pivot chart field. So you can have charts and pivot tables. Now, the good thing with the pivot table, uh, pivot chart is if I right mouse click on this and change the chart type, I might say, you know what, that's not really doing it for me. What I want to have a look at is a pie chart. So I can quickly change the chart to a pie and you'll see here that what I get is if I mouse over um, that area, you can see that obviously the cannabis is the largest with 52%. And if I go to the gray one, uh, crack there is for example, 11%. So a very quick, easy way to um, display your uh, information. Now, one of the features that has been added in the later versions of um, basically Excel. So what we need to do is let's pop back to our raw data. So now I can go into this option here, this 3D map. Now, because I've got location data in my map, what I can do is I can basically import that uh, into what's called power map. So we had a look at uh, power chart there. We had a uh, sorry, power view. Uh, so again, what we've got here is basically taking that information so what I'm going to do here, you'll see that I've got longitude and latitude in the locations to work that out. So the height field here is what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that the IUCR and the category I'm going to make here is the description. So this is very much uh, along the lines of data. So what I'll do is I'll just get rid of that and let me just make this a bit smaller so we can see what's going on here. Um, and then as you can see, because I have graphical, uh, sorry, location information, you'll see that I can now present that uh, in a uh, example over um, some um, some big maps here. So if I drill in a bit, so we get a bit better idea of what the data looks like. Okay, so here's a graphical representation of um, the basically uh, that's the sum of the crimes. We want to obviously change that to the count. Let's just change that, see how quickly that is to change, and then it will then go in and update for us. Okay, so I drill in just a little bit more so you get a bit better idea here. Okay, so again, you can see the, the categorization of the crime in color. Um, you can see that it's aggregated at by location. So there's one place in Chicago where a hell of a lot of crime seems to happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. But again, it gives you a very good graphical representation of what's possible with the data. Now, down the bottom here, what I can also now do is because I do have a date field, I can now add that as another category in which to analyze my data. Now, as you can see, it's running in the background. It processes this. And what we can do is now that we have time data, if I can now push play, you'll see what it does is it shows me the aggregated count of the crimes basically over time. So again, what it's showing me is over the time that I have recorded there, that's um, the proliferation of crime. So again, good example here of some of the built-in tools um, that you do get with uh, Excel out of the box. Now, again, that can obviously display a huge amount of information and it's a matter of understanding the base level information. So what we can also do with Excel is if we open a new clean sheet here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go to my data tab here and you'll see that I can get uh, external data and I can get it from access, from the web, from all different sources. But I'm actually going to pull this um, from a, not my own website, pull this from a rather interesting, more interesting website. Uh, so no, because that script's on my page. So what I'll do here is I will put in a web page that is on the internet. Okay, so this page here basically categorizes worldwide shark attacks and you'll see that what Excel has done, it has identified a number of tables on this web page. So what I can do is just go in and tick these two table and then I go import. I'm going to put it into a sheet here and it will go out and it will get that data 
and it will then display it in my spreadsheet in cells. It will then give me the ability to go in and manipulate that base calculations off that. So uh, if you're worried about shark attacks on divers, Queensland's probably not the place to be. Um, but you get the idea here. Now, the thing is, is once I've pulled this data in from a source like, you know, wherever outside um, Excel, you'll see that I have the ability to go and refresh it. So imagine a situation where you or a customer could take information based on um, uh, Bureau of Statistics, uh, postcode demographics, all of that, and maybe apply it against their sales. So again, Excel has a huge amount of um, power already built into it. And again, think of Power BI now as the next um, step up or the next enhancement of that. So I'll just close that. So again, that's sort of all the stuff we can do with Excel. But what we want to do here is we want to get in and have a look at Power BI. So what I'll do is let's just go into our uh, into the standard Power BI website here. So that's accessed via powerbi.com. OK, so again, if you go into the products here, you'll see that we have the option uh, under products here for uh, pricing. OK, so if we go and have a look at the pricing. You'll see now that Power BI has been simplified to have basically two models. There is, um, as you can see, a free version. So what that means is that anybody can use the basic Power BI version. And then if they're a uh, power user, they want more functionality, they can pay $9 a month and upgrade to the pro version. So these are the new models. So the free version that anybody's entitled to gives them the ability to upload up to a gig's worth of data from their data sources. It can create dashboards, do all this, good, all this good sort of stuff. Where we start to see variation is typically around data refresh. So the data refresh on the free version is only daily, whereas hourly for the paid version, 10,000 rows per hour versus a million rows and a number of uh, additional features there. But the important thing to remember here is that importantly, Power BI is um, a free add-on or freely available uh, basically to uh, any person here. So if I now go in uh, to my uh, Office 365, so if I log in to my Office 365, Okay, so one of the things that that means is is that when you create a Power BI uh, account, if you use your Office 365 login for that, you will see that the Power BI now comes, um, now is displayed as an application in the app launcher. So if your users have gone in and enabled it or had a play with Power BI, they will now start seeing this tile. Now, if they click on uh, if they then, you, for you to add it, all you need to do is go and log in to Power BI with an Office 365 login, and the Power Free Power BI licenses will be added to that tenant automatically for you. But if we go into uh, the Power BI uh, tile here, what we'll be able to see is what the new Power BI basically looks like, what the interface looks like. Okay, so again, what I'll do here is let's start with the basics. So the basics is in Power BI, we need to build our models, our information on data sources. So where do we get our data sources? So the first place you can get a data source is you can go and create your own content pack. So your own content pack can pull information from your own SQL, from your in-house apps, for anything that you've got on premise, um, if you so decide you want to build it. The next option we've got here is a number of common services that you can pull data from. Now, again, a lot of these look, you know, very developery, but two of the most important ones, which will illustrate a little bit further down, is Google Analytics and MailChimp, both of which I have connected up. So if you have a website, you can use Google Analytics, which is a free tool uh, to uh, get your statistics, get your usage, get your interactions with the website. And you can now use Power BI to pull that information directly into a dashboard. Same thing if you're doing bulk mail outs. If, your comp if the company or the business is looking to do uh, email marketing, that's uh, an excellent tool to do that. But if you scroll through, you'll see that there are more and more applications here and they are adding these every day. Okay, so the other data sources we can get, uh, if we go, we can upload a file. So we can take a local file. So when you upload a local file, that's where the storage component of Power BI is consumed. You can pull it from a OneDrive for business and you can pull it from OneDrive for personal. So don't forget that Power BI is free, 
Um, so you could have your files stored in your free OneDrive um, personal option and pull from that into uh, basically your Office 365, uh, sorry, but into your Power BI, okay? And the last option we've got here is to pull from databases. So typically we want to be able to pull from things like Azure SQL, we want to pull from your data warehousing, analysis services, all those sort of stuff. So all that sort of data that you may an be analyzing. So imagine maybe a point of sale environment that's uh, populating data into an SQL database. You want to provide some sort of uh, analysis over the top of that, you can certainly do that and build that for you. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to log into my other Office 365 tenant because that's where the examples are. So I'm going to log into that. Give that a sec. I'll run that in a, oops, have to put secure. Okay, so again, what we'll see here is if I log into my Office 365 tenant, again, as soon as it recognizes my uh, domain there, you'll see that it changes it to a customized field. And we have, um, we did cover that in a previous uh, webinar on Azure. So again, you can get the customization in the Office 365. So again, you'll see when I come in, I, in this case, I'll come into my admin console. I'll go to my uh, app launcher in the top uh, left here, also affectionately known as the waffle. Uh, if we go into Power BI from there, this will take me to my um, account. So I just need to sign in because I'm in private browsing at the moment. Okay, give that a minute to or a second to load. Okay, so then what we'll see here is, uh, let's go to the example for the retail analysis, okay? So as you can see here, this is a Power BI dashboard, okay? So this is pulling data from a source, whatever that is, and you can see it's now displaying it real-time information, up to date. Um, you've got location data, you've got graphs, you've got pies, you've got numbers, you've got all sorts of things in there. Now, Again, I can click on any of the information there and, and drill into it. I can edit my dashboard. So for example, if I have the right, you can see that I can change the sorting method. Um, and if I want, so if I mouse over that, for example, and select that, you'll see that it'll give me the information for that month. When I select that, you'll see that it grays out the other areas and then all the other information updates based on what I have selected there. Okay, so again, if I select this gray dot down here, you'll see that this graph up the top changes. We can go over here and we can obviously filter different information. But I think of a dashboard again as a live um, view of uh, all the information. Now what we can do is we can take that information and rather having it live, we can put it together into what's known as reports. So what we've got here is the same sort of data, but now we've got it broken out into different pages. Okay, so the reports, again, can show a number of different dashboards. So think of a dashboard as a single pane of glass. Think of your reports as a multiple um, arrangement of reports here. Okay, now, if we have a look at something specific, so I have a website that I have developed and uh, maintained as a personal interest. And you can see here that I've now connected that up to Google Analytics. So this is now my dashboard, which is pulling in all the information um, in regards to the interactions from uh, Google Analytics, right? So I can look at, for example, the amount of users, their browsers. Again, remember, this is a live dashboard. Now, if I go to the reports, so I've created a number of reports based on these. Okay, so what I've got here obviously are things that are relevant that I want to have a look at. So the, the traffic in the last 90 days, um, the hits, the bounces, the sessions, which days of the week. If I then go to the next report here, you'll see I get hits by browser, all that sort of stuff. And again, if you note, if I select, for example, uh, this, which is iOS, so if I select that graph, you'll see that, again, all the um, information here on my map updates because it's live. So it shows me the, the browser information there and it also shows, updates that information to show me that um, based on what I've selected. So again, if I select this area, again, you'll see that Chrome, you'll see all this updates automatic, you'll see my map change as well to information. So again, it's all interactive, that's the main thing to remember. So users in the last 30 days, and again, you get the idea with the um, different level of reports here. And again, I've got the filters over here, 
And you'll notice a little push pin here that I can then uh, pin that visual to my uh, dashboard if I want. Now the final option down the bottom here is our data sets. Okay, now you'll notice that what I've got here is my favorite, um, Chicago Narcotics. So what I've done is simply uploaded that spreadsheet we started working on in Excel. Um, I've uploaded that to a storage area. I've now connected that into my Power BI. So again, this is where the pivot table idea comes in. So what I'm going to do is again, select um, IUCR and I'm going to select description. Okay, so these were the two things that I was working on before. So let's break that out, make that a bit bigger so we can see what's going on. Okay, now obviously again, um, the IUCR here, we want to change that from sum to um, count. So let's change that to count. Okay, so again, that's the way that we want to uh, basically be able uh, to do that. Okay, so again, if I, uh, again, so I can sort all this, I can do all that sort of information. So if I go in here and go sort by, uh, let's go count of IUCR. Okay, so then we get our sorting from highest to lowest. Okay, but again, this is a bit of an information uh, overload here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a filter here. So scroll down a bit so you can see what's going on. So what I'm going to say is, okay, I only want to see things here which are crimes that are greater than, let's say, whoop, not 8,000, let's say 800. Okay. Oops. All right, so that's good. So hopefully that should then, uh, let's, that should then uh, apply. Uh, apply filter. There we go. Okay, so that's now basically broken me down to um, half a dozen odd crimes, which obviously occur fairly regularly. Now, once again, um, if I mouse over the different regions, you'll see that it gives me a description, gives me the count, gives me the information. So again, even in this editing phase, it's in a highly interactive mode. Once again, if I want, if the column graphs really don't impress me, um, I can quickly and easily change it to a pie chart, which I've done up here under the visualizations. Now that makes a lot more sense. So I can now see that obviously cannabis is quite popular, whereas something like cocaine, maybe not so much. So then once I've got the visualization that I want, you'll see that I have a pin here. I can now pin that to my dashboard, pin that to my reports, and I can keep going around and creating reports and dashboards based on that information. So again, all I've done is basically uploaded my um, Chicago arrests or Chicago narcotics uh, spreadsheet, which we work on Excel, up into Power BI, actually accessing it through OneDrive for Business. And then I'm able to go in and perform very similar pivot table style uh, environments that I had um, before in Excel. But as you can see, the visualization is um, pretty powerful. Now, that's all well and good. And what I'm going to do is, I think, show you the, the crown jewel, I think, of the um, Power BI. So I'm not going to save this dashboard. Let me go out here. The power, the real crown jewel of this is what's called Power Query. So if I go in here and now type my da dashboard, this is, this is my website. So I'm going to type in here total hits. So what it's going to do now, it's querying that uh, Google Analytics data from my website live. But I can keep going. I can go websites last month. Okay, then I can do from France compared to Australia. Okay, and you can see as I type in that data, the Power BI engine behind the scenes makes the interpretation for me and pulls that information in and displays it in the best virtualization option that I have available. Now, once I have that, I can then obviously pin that to a dashboard so that I have the query that I have created displayed for me. Again, so again, if I can go back and go back in here, and then I could go uh, compared to Australia, um, let's say here uh, and the UK. Okay, and you can see that it understands that UK means United Kingdom. All right, so over here on the right, you'll see our familiar virtualization. So maybe maybe I want a pie chart again. Let's go back. I have a real thing for pie charts here. So again, mouse over it. We get all the information that we want. You'll see that once I look at the fields, this gives me basically all the fields that it is all the data fields that are being pulled in from the Google Analytics uh, engine here, the data source. So as you can see, there are lots and lots of different data sources or data columns here that I can start pulling in and 
creating all sorts of different reports. Once I create the report, again, I pin it to my dashboard so that when I go to my dashboard, I can then see that information live updated every time I go in. Now, obviously, what I can also do if I want, um, I can uh, basically go in here and I can, sorry, share this dashboard. So if I want to, I can now share this dashboard with others inside my business, okay? And I can choose whether to make it uh, basically, uh, you know, whether they can share, reshare the dashboard as well. So the ability to share that information also is very key to doing all that sort of thing. So again, that really in a nutshell is the concept here. We take the power of uh, something like Excel we then have uh, added in things like Power Query, Power Map, Pivot Tables, Power Pivot, all that sort of stuff. And then we can get analysis in Excel. We can take that same sort of data or pull it from web sources and then pull it into a tool like Power BI, which is, I suppose, effectively just like the, the Pivot Table Power and the Power Maps and all that sort of stuff uh, in a web app and connect that up and start pulling and creating dashboards and reports based on that. Uh, data. So it is extremely powerful. Now, beyond the web, uh, just the pure web stuff, what we've got here is part of Power BI also is the Power BI desktop. So you can download a free creation tool that allows you to go in and author those um, reports um, and dashboards and that sort of thing offline. Okay, so you can basically do that uh, basic in a tool on your desktop. Okay. And so just close this. So you'll see it's very much the same visualizations. We can go and get the data from different sources. We can then edit the query. So again, think of the desktop tool as just the pivot table component and the power maps and that sort of stuff in uh, from Excel. Again, free download. And then when we're ready, we've created that. We just publish that up and that will publish it into our Power BI. So again, I would suggest that this tool is going to become more and more powerful to allow you to create really, really customized webs offline and then push them up into something like Power BI. Now, importantly, don't forget that Power BI, a great application, but it also comes in a number of uh, mobile apps. So there's a mobile app for iOS, there's a mobile app for um, Android. So that means that as a uh, business owner, financial controller on the road, they can go in and run their mobile app and display their dashboards and their reports directly on their mobile device, which is very, very enticing. Now, part of the mobile app story here in uh, Windows 10 is that what we'll find for Windows 10 and Windows 8 users, you'll find that there is a Power BI app you can download from the store. So again, imagine this on a Surface PC or a touch device or just a screen. So for example, if I go into my uh, retail analysis, which you looked at before, so this is exactly the same dashboard, but exactly in a single pane of glass here for me to have a look at. So again, imagine a you know owner of a business being able to basically click on that app and then be able to see all their stats, all their information, all their important figures quickly and easily without having to dive into huge amounts of information. So if you download that app, you'll find, for example, over here on the right, there are a number of different uh, options here. So if we go, for example, and have a look at the example for the marketing manager. Okay, so again, really easy to go in and demo people. Once again, if I drill on a component there, it will bring, up, it will bring that up in a... Uh, magnifier. I can, if I want, I can go in and annotate it, share it, do all those sort of things. Now, that's the Power BI app, which is, again, is a free app. The other one that Microsoft has recently purchased and working with to integrate is a tool here called DataZen. So DataZen is a more, I suppose, well-established uh, BI style tool. Uh, and again, it's being integrated further and further into the, the Power BI stack. But as you can see here, if we, for example, drill into the marketing dashboard, so this is pulling data from a, a data Zen source, basically, which uh, eventually, I suppose, comes through SQL. But you'll see here that it's much easier, nice and easy to use, very dashboard orientated. If I go, for example, to sales for last quarter, that updates, I can drill into all the components here. Um, this is all interactive. Okay, so that's a, another good example. If we go a bit further across here, you'll see there are, there are some pretty 
cluey examples here. So this, for example, is an insurance fund. So maybe you're looking at insurance claims across different states or different regions. Again, this is where our demographic postcode information can come in to provide us uh, benefit for that. So you can build that sort of information into these dashboard tools. The last one I'll show you here again, very interesting what they're achieving. So here, for example, is a Gulfstream layout with the cost of repairing all the different uh, major aspects of that. So uh, very, very enticing, especially for uh, managers and operators who just want at least a simplistic overview of um, their information. So again, Data Zen, you can download that today on your uh, Windows uh, 10, Windows 8 devices. It's also a mobile app. And you can then basically go out and do demos and give people ideas of, again, what can be created using uh, these sort of tools. Now, the, uh, the last thing that I'll mention here is that uh, all of that seems good and yes, we've all got to build it and that is maybe a bit challenging um, for a lot of people who aren't into uh, the numbers or aren't into Excel, but the reason why Power BI is very important if you're doing Office 365 is because Microsoft announced recently that, uh, recently announced that what they're creating is those content packs, remember those different data sources, what we're going to see very shortly is we're going to start seeing those content packs for Office 365. So what you'll see here is an Office 365 usage report dashboard displayed through Power BI. So Microsoft will be releasing a free content pack which will allow you to connect a Power BI, ten, uh, sorry, a tenant information from Office 365 to Power BI to display this sort of information. So again, here's another one here that shows you, for example, usages, engagement. Now, that sort of information that you're seeing there will be pulled from Skype for Business, Exchange, emails, Yammer, um, all that sort of stuff will be then surfaced in a dashboard tool like that. So this means potentially that you'll be able to create these dashboards that you can then view on your customer's behalf or you can set up for your customers or you can uh, do whatever you want with them. But the big thing is it gives you this power, it really gives you this impact, it really makes life simple to analyze this data. So at this stage, these content packs for Office 365 aren't as yet available, but we're expecting them to arrive uh, very, very shortly. All right, so with that, let me uh, go back to my slides and just finish off this session for you. Okay, so give that a moment for the slides to come up. All right, so we've done our demo. Okay, so as always, let's go through some best practices to round off uh, today's session. So. My advice to you is, is be ready for Power BI questions. Customers are going to find it. They're going to find the icon. They're going to find the website. Microsoft's certainly going to be pushing it to them. Um, again, others will be using Power BI. So make sure that you are skilled to at least, at the very least, be able to answer intelligently questions about Power BI, what it can do, show some examples, um, be prepared for those questions because they will come. If you are going out and demoing uh, Office 365 or you're talking to your customers, make sure that you include Power BI in those demos. Because uh, if a client discovers Power BI and maybe or someone else or a competitor comes in and shows them Power BI, I'm pretty confident that it's going to blow them away. They're going to be very, very keen on it and that may be uh, an unfortunate wedge for them to get inside your customer's business. So my advice to you strongly is make sure that you go and show them these tools, even if they don't adopt them, um, certainly go out and show them. Every time you do a prospect or whatever, make sure you show them Power BI and line yourself up with being the people to come to when it comes to analysis. Hopefully what you've also gained, you may not have seen, is there is so much power in Excel. Okay, the pivot tables, the power map, the power query, all that sort of stuff is extremely powerful. And the ability to connect to external data sources like websites. So you can pull information from websites that display tables. You can update those regularly. You can pull all these data sources into a single analysis tool on your desktop, which is Excel. The other point with Excel is I would be hard pressed to think of another application that resides on every user's desktop that I know of. Every user that I 
have seen typically has Excel on their desktop, knows how to use Excel to a basic extent and is comfortable with it. So when you're having a conversation about enhanced services or IP or that sort of stuff, Excel is always going to be a, an easy conversation to start. Now we're talking about the dawn of big data. We're talking about the Internet of Things industry trends. This means that very shortly, everything you can see, everything you can touch will be spitting data, will be capturing and trying to return data. That data is all well and good, but it has to be analyzed somewhere. It has to be made into information. That's where the Power BI comes in and the analysis comes to be able to, for example, pull information from a point of sale system so that you can see overs and unders and stock levels and compare that um, to staff wages and all that sort of stuff is where the power of this is. Once you've got lots and lots of data, that's great, but you need to analyze it. And the tools like Excel and Power BI give uh, the end user the ability to analyze this quickly and easily, drill into their information, visualize it in any which way or shape they choose. So the takeaways are, again, if you do nothing else, go and connect a user's Power BI to Google and to their Google Analytics. If they haven't got Google Analytics, go and set it up on their website and connect the their Google Analytics to Power BI in their Office 365. And I'm pretty confident that they will be very, very pleased with the result. If you have your own website on Google Analytics, you should do that first and then go out and show your customers. It makes a great demo. Okay, watch out for the upcoming Office 365 analytic packs that are coming uh, that allow you to connect to Office 365 information for each and every tenant. Uh, again, a very good way to provide reports and information on the, in, the interactions in an Office 365 environment. You can also now look to build your own connection or connections to various sorts of data. So maybe we pull from point of sale, maybe we pull from census data, maybe we pull from this website or stock prices or whatever. So we can pull from internal sources, we can pull from databases, we can pull from external uh, uh, sources. We can pull that all together in Excel on the desktop or Power BI and we can display that quickly and easily and refresh that on a regular basis. So again, the data analysis side of this is a huge opportunity to take advantage of. And if you're in an industry, maybe you're in accounts, whatever, accounting, think about maybe you could build um, an industry standard dashboard or maybe, you know, workers performance per hour or cost of uh, like the insurance claim one we had, how many claims per region or how many, um, you know, expenses per whatever. Just think of all the um, analysis that in certain industries do to provide the analytics, even in your own business. Think about all those analytics that you'll probably maybe in the spreadsheet or maybe have other third party tools. Wouldn't it be good to be able to pull that into a single dashboard um, that gives you that sort of power that can also be meshed with uh, external data. So maybe something like uh, how many calls come from different customers or different regions or working out the optimization routes for engineers to travel when they move from job to job to job. Uh, again, the, 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 the limit, it's basically limitless here, what you can do. And the final thing here is, again, look at how many people are currently doing data analysis. Look how many people are currently providing this sort of resource, especially in this, maybe the smaller end of the market. There aren't a lot of people that are doing it. So there certainly is an opportunity to go in and create your own IP, create your own offerings, build a product, a service, an offering around uh, Power BI, but also Excel. Again, think how many people use Excel day in and day out and probably have never used pivot tables, have never used Power Map, have never used Power Query, aren't pulling from external sources, aren't even using Excel properly. So I see a huge demand uh, in training Excel, showing people how to optimize and use the tools that they already have on the desktop. That's a great conversation to have. To go into a business and say, Basically, you don't have to buy any more product. You've already got all the tools you need. Just let me show you how to be more productive with them and achieve what you want to. If you don't then want to spend the time doing it, you can outsource it to me and I can build that solution for you. And the advantage you get not only is the return, but you can then probably take that information or that skill and take it to uh, somebody else or another customer or reuse that IP in other areas. So again, I think there's a huge opportunity around Excel uh, and building on that Power BI. So there are some resources, you'll get the slides from this presentation after, after the event. Uh, a lot of it you'll find at powerbi.com. They've also got their own YouTube web, website, uh, YouTube channel. 
plenty of great videos on there and again the information on the content packs coming soon uh was there so with that before you all duck off i uh, much appreciate you uh coming here to spending time with us if you can just take a moment to answer the slide and much appreciate letting us know uh, which state that you are your business is based in so we've got an indication uh for the dicker people so i'll just leave that up for a minute appreciate the time that you spent having a look at power bi hopefully it's answered some of your questions or got you started or at least got you um, interested in that uh, which is the important thing so again just a minute to complete those uh, much appreciated if you could do that okay so i think we've got everybody's responses so let me go back to the slide thank you very much for that and just let's round off for this uh, session okay so next slide Remember that if you need to contact the people from Dicker, here's all their information. The main point of contact is obviously microsoft.sales at dickerdata.com.au. You can use this old fashioned thing called the telephone and still call them on a 1-800 number, but email is probably the best option. Uh, again, thanks for attending. Appreciate you, your attention. Remember, we'll be back next Wednesday, same time. And that will be talking about Skype for Business the week after Azure Open Calculator then uh, Office 365 Identities, and then in October we'll start looking at some admin around SharePoint Online. Remember, if you've got any questions, queries, follow-ups, um, please make sure you email microsoft.sales at dickadata.com.au. Any questions for me, I'll hang around for a few minutes to answer those in the chat if you so, uh, if you have anything that's a burning question there. Otherwise, don't forget the session is recorded and will be posted up online for your review. The slides will be made available after the fact. Again, thank you very much for attending and I'll see you in the next webinar.